Hey guys, I'm back. I hope you all have been doing well. Uh, sorry for the uh, lack of videos in the past uh, five days or so. I have been on vacation and now I'm back to work, so that's been occupying my time as usual. So I was out of state for a couple days and uh, took a few personal days, uh, but mostly this has been a vacation from my YouTube channel. Um, not really in the mood to do a entry for the Demon Lord or any other um, actual solo RPGs. However, I was uh, thinking about my top five like favorite RPGs that I've uh, grown to enjoy since starting this channel. Um, and also, five that I want to learn eventually. So, this video will be a combination of the two. We'll first uh, go through my five favorite currently, which... You know, everyone has their favorites, and that's always subject to change. So I, you know, these are not like my top five in order forever. Uh, but these are five that you guys have seen me play quite often. One being only have played a few, but a lot of these uh, you probably can guess what I'm about to say. But these are no in particular order uh, for both these lists. But let's begin with the my top five favorite RPGs slash tabletop RPGs. So of course I'm going to mention Karen. Karen is by far my favorite um, for, well, I shouldn't say by far. Um, it's my favorite for a, a, a D20. This is my favorite um, D20 system. I was trying to think of, a, like, how should I say it, like for exploration or quick quick play. But I think D20, just the style, just the, the type of um, game that this is. Karen is a very simplistic. It's as light as my next... Um, choice my next uh, favorite but i really enjoy the character creation process it has uh, a bunch of spells and the character sheet which i've been using for um the demon lord is i really enjoy it's one it's by far one of my favorite character sheet designs to date and that could be a separate video actually but i just thought i'd throw that out there so it's a fun game it's very um i guess we can say it's very gothic it's it's very unforgiving. You can character can die pretty quick unless you get an advantage, especially from solo play. But I do enjoy it. There, it, there's no miss. You just throw your damage die for attack, and you deal damage minus armor. So it's that kind of game. It really pits you against uh, a lot of challenges out there. Now, for me, I've hacked this game quite a bit, and I I think this is also my favorite method of handling spells. I love the spell books. Your character can just hold a spell book. You say it, and it's up to you the, or the GM that you want to, you know, make the spellbook disappear or be reusable after a critical roll. That's, you know, it's always adjustable. But I do love the spellbooks in this game, and I like that kind of... Um, I do enjoy that kind of method of using spells in RPGs. Because spells, for me, I'm not too experienced in uh, using spells or how to create spells. But that will be coming up next, so... Uh, this is definitely my favorite method of how to use the for the char player characters to use spells. Now, for creating spells, that's a different story. Next up, my favorite 2D6 system is Maze Rats. This is by far my favorite. Uh, this was my first, like, I guess my first official favorite RPG after I tried a bunch of others, um, especially for independent creators like uh, Ben Milton. Um, who was, I think, Questing Beast on YouTube, I believe. But, th again, another rules-like game, but uh, with this one, there's a bunch of tables on it. There's a loads of tables. You can respectively use this book just for the tables. And it's really up to you, uh, but the magic system I love in this game. So, in, in my perfect world, I guess I would combine spell books being made with this method. That's kind of what I'm trying to say, is that I enjoy the spellbook concept being a physical book your character can hold and build and conjure, but the make to make them space uh, space rats. That's another idea right there. Maze rats um, is just a great method to roll, and then it's a different type of spells like physical element and, and physical form, ether, uh, ethereal elements, ethereal effects. There's a bunch of just different methods, but it's a two d six system. It's um, not based on um, a 
the Powered by the Apocalypse system, but it's, it's I should say it's really based on it. It's similar, but it's, it's 2d6. You roll at or uh, a 10 or above, and it's a success. Character creation process is, is, is also fun and quick, and it, you can level up the characters in this game. Maze Rats, or I'm sorry, Karen, you cannot uh, level up, but you can implement a leveling system. Roll d6 for health, or uh, roll 3d6 at your at your ability score. If it's higher, increase it by one, which I've been doing for the Demon Lord. So, yeah, Maze Rats is a very fun game. I'm sure I've missed a few things, but it, yeah, it, it's... Um, oh, yeah, right, the weapon game. The So in Karen, it's... it's Weapons have damage dice, damage die, and uh, for maze rats, it's at or above the armor of the enemy, and it's just a two d six. There is no weapon dice. It's what you roll for your attack roll, and if it hits that armor, then it's it's damage done. The difference is the damage calculated. Plus the if you have a heavy weapon, it could be a plus one. So there is a bonus for the weapon. Plus, again, you can hack these rules because that's the advantage of rules like games. Next is practically a novel, Dungeon World. Um, I took this with me on my flight, and I just read through the whole thing again. And it, it's Dungeon World is a great game, and it is expendable. Expandable. I'm sorry. You can there are um, you can uh, use it for exploration, but it's really again for dungeons. But I think Power by the Apocalypse has become my favorite go to and i really do enjoy the method of, of partial success complete success failure rules under six or less i love that and, th and th this is an incredibly simple game but it has a play kits which each character class has its own design of character sheets but it's very easy it hand it holds your hand through the process and then you can while leveling up but it does have that very limited system like maze rats where it, you are you can't really go beyond plus three or plus four because roll 2d6 and then you're at that 7 through 9 or 10 or higher then you you know you would have to expand the degree of success to make your character go further but you can get to i think level 9 or so in this game and then there's a process to retire a character or um i believe to uh hire a higher or have a higher lane etc but yeah there are there are levels in this game it's a very fun game but it's also very co uh cooperative it really emphasizes you have to talk with your with your group and and the uh, the game master uh, to advance the narrative, advance the adventure. So it's a great mix of RPG plus kind of a storytelling to it, a concept as a group. So it leaves you up uh, narratively on how to deal with failure roles, but still get XP in, the, in in at the end of rolling your fail while trying to figure out what a partial success does, and then obviously it's successful. So it's a really innovative, interesting game, and I love that the book is, is, is plenty of pages, 300 plus pages on this book. So now, th those are the three um, kind of, not like, you know, Dungeon World isn't physically small, but it's small in size. Now we get to the uh, bigger ones. Scarlet Heroes. This is... Um, my most at least experienced book on here, but I have played it, so that's why I feel it qualifies to be on my list. I haven't really put this on a full adventure yet, but a couple of test plays. But I feel that Scarlet Heroes does Scarlet Heroes deserves to be on here. And take note that my, these two lists are games that I have in my physical possession, and does not include any one page RPG. So there is no World of Dungeons on here. As much as I love that. It's not unfortunately. It's unfortunately not on here. I wanted to actually include games that have, or at least rules light and higher. So Scarlet Heroes is a very interesting, innovative game, but I have it on here because of its of its somewhat similarity to Thaco, which we will get to in a second, which I'm not experienced with, by the way. Um, but Scarlet Heroes has that very interesting combination of different types of roles: the 2d8, I believe, and then the I'm going to say, it's been a while, there is a D20, I could be mistaken, but it's been a bit, but I remember that this game has that fray die that gives you the extra punch you need. So, the reason why it's on this list is because this is great for solo. This is probably like, the only solo game really has a solo mechanic in on my list. That's why it ultimately it's on here. It has a solo sec section. 
it has tables, it has a, it has an oracle. Um, I may not be a complete genius on this game, but um, with its 2D8 mechanic rolling at or above a difficulty type of score, the fray die gives you that extra punch at equal or less leveled enemies for more damage. Your character is going to be a badass, and it's going to be heroic and very strong compared to other games that you start either level 0 or level 1. And this that's why I enjoy um, the concept of, of Scarlet Heroes. I recommend it if you want to play a solo game where your character, player character is a solo hero of sorts, and you have that extra oomph to deal damage and survive in a brutal world. Again, that's why I put it on Next is the final. Again, these are not in order. They just ba- actually they didn't uh, based on size so far because that's how I have them stacked. Of course, I'm going to mention GURPS. This is the third edition. Um, I I have the fourth edition books, but for some reason I prefer the third edition. It's been an absolute joy to to learn GURPS. I'm still learning it. It, it is a mix of complicated rules and very simplistic rules. There is so much in here in this one book. GURPS 4th edition is split into two, the, the campaign book, I believe, and the character book. Um, the player's book, basically, that's what I'm trying to say. But I love the skill concept. The character sheet is magnificent. Um, it's great. And I, I just I love holding this old, just nostalgic book. Uh, designs of it, the text, it's beat up. There's stain, There's like water stains in here luckily it doesn't smell or anything it, it's just it i love that it's been used and it's just like it, it's worn here on the sides this just feels like something that's been on that's on someone's shelf for years and i'm happy to be the you know the new owner for it um but it's the skills thing mainly like rolling at skills trying to calculate the character creation process the character creation process in this is not complicated but it can be and I'm still learning it, but I feel like I've learned a lot in here, and I've, I and I can I've created dozen dozen plus characters so far just for fun, not even on camera. Um, that doesn't include my on camera char- uh, on camera characters. But GURPS is fun. It's a three six system. I forgot for a second. Um, sorry, work has been uh, just push me push my mental limits here. Three uh, d six system, and you have to roll at or below your skill and you have four attribute uh, four attributes and they are all linked to skills and you can purchase skills with a point buying system this is a point based system there is no levels you care your character is and can grow on very specific skills so at the end of each session you assign your character, uh, the, the, the game master would assign the team, the group, uh, points, three or five or so. That's based on what the book says. Three for like normal, five for uh, you know, a very good camp, a very good session. But I love this engine so much, I've been mixing it with my other favorite, Karen, for the Demon Lord series. And what I did, in case you guys haven't watched, are not watching it, uh, I combined Karen because again it's a it's a D20 system in Karen and a 3D6 system kind of falls pretty well in line with Karen. I've been using skills based on the three main attributes. And it works. Because in GURPS it's either dexterity or uh, IQ. Well, we have dexterity and willpower. And there's also some strength ones too. So and I have, I have the understanding that GURPS 4, 4th edition, which is the current one, is does streamline a few, uh, does fix up a few things. But I do like the complexity of, of, of GURPS. The one thing I'm still trying to learn is combat. Combat is either basic or advanced. The advanced one's like very specific on locate, body, hit locations, etc. But the GURPS is by far my favorite. I, I, if I had to put it on, like, if I had to put this on a list, I think this would be close up to the top the the first bracket, the first spot. So, uh, you know, g- generic universal role playing system. You can play anything with it, and there's hundreds of, of campaign other setting books officially released by Steve Jackson Games, I, I believe. 
what I've heard from fellow fans. Um, it's a great game. I really enjoy it, and it, I just I like to hold it, read it, and just use it. You know, on on uh, on my on my channel for you guys. So yeah, this is no way this was this was not going to be on the list. So now that we're done with my actual top five, uh, <laughs> my top five favorite played RPGs, these next five and a half or so, and you'll see why I say that, are ones I own, but haven't had the time or a chance to really learn them. I've I've um, skimmed through them. I know the very basics of them. But these are five that are really appealing to me on my ever slowly growing list of or collection of RPG games. And there's a bunch more on my left that I haven't even opened yet. First is Old School Essentials. This is the room uh, rules two, tome. Um, tomb, tome, tome, tome. I have the kit that includes the monsters, the uh, weapons, and adventures, etc. I have that box set to the side, but I just wanted to pull out this. This is a very fascinating game because of its, not only because of its very friendly professional design, but because it does seem to have that complexity to, the, to an extent based on OSR games. And it's Thacko. This game actually got me into Thacko. Like, like interested in learning it. And again, I think I know the very, very basic attempt at using Thacko, which we will get to in a second. But this has a helping hand in using Thacko. And it also has that just OSR feel to it with a bunch of rules. This is the whole book. It includes this, the rules tome includes everything in here that you need to play. And it, I feel like this would be actually pretty good for um, solo. But the character sheet is actually really interesting. I do like it. And on top of that, it has the these quick guides on the front and back of the book. So, Old School Essentials is definitely really interesting, and I feel like there's another competitive product that's similar to this on my list that we'll get to in a second. So, Old School Essentials, I'm, I really want to get to it. I have the whole play kit, or the whole set uh, box set. This is the classic fantasy one. Uh, but yeah, I do like the design. It has the ribbons on here, and it, it's just really appealing. So there's that. Next is one that I have read through, Probably the most out of my little collection here, but I still don't feel I know it enough. And that is um, Savage Worlds. This is not Suede. This is the Deluxe Sports Edition. I have Suede, but again, I prefer this design for some reason. I I, hear, I have the understanding that Suede is uh, more streamlined, more compact, or, well, I guess, I don't know. I shouldn't speak like I know about it, but I have the understanding for based on YouTube reviews that Suede is just more cleaned up, and it's just more... It's the modern, I think it's the current active edition. But I like... I really do like the design of Dungeon uh, Deluxe. The Deluxe Adventures Edition. Explorers Edition, sorry. And it's... Also because of the size, it's a little smaller. And for some reason, it does have a nostalgic, a little older design look to it. I mean, it's not an old game. It's not a very, very old game. It's from 2012, at least this one is. I know Savage Rules has been long out longer than that. For a couple decades now i believe but uh i do love the wild die concept in this and that, that's an extra d6 so you have to roll at a success i believe at a four and then you can uh your dice explode which i think it's called acing in this and then if you roll again another four you you get another success and you can keep going as much as your dice explodes based on the dice you roll and the thing i love about this game is the character sheets uh you have a type of die tied to an attribute and skill that you that you roll, so it's more wild. But then you get you have that D six wild die that also explodes, or aces, to give you success. So there is a lot of room for failure, but also a lot of um, chances for success based on that four. And I think there's modifiers for um, implementing difficulty. But again, this is what I really want to. Um, I feel like I've, I kind of wish I took this on the trip, but because it's a little smaller, because the dungeon world is is it's thicker in size and this fits better in the bag. Uh, but yeah, this is, appears to be a very fun game, and I've watched lots of um, solo RPGs on, on YouTube using Suede, or at least, well, Suede and this, respectively. So, Savage Worlds in general, I guess I should say that, that this is a very appealing game. So, uh, yeah. Next, this game is by far the best for solo play. I unfortunately don't have the first one, but I have the, the space that version. That's Ironsworn Starforged. This game is... 
It has the three guided co-op is solo. has all the tables. There's a bunch of uh, mechanics for it. The oracle's tied into the game. Um, there's a bunch of pages. This, I feel like I'm the kind of person that, that I feel overwhelmed at the amount of details in here but then someone who probably plays would be like no no, no. It, it's, it's a lot easier than it looks just read the rules give it a shot and it becomes you know it becomes playable after that but I, at the moment right like at the moment it's been for me this thing is complicated it appears complicated to me it scares me away at times but i really want to try it i'm also on the fence just wanting to play this with everything else i have so uh starforge it's two dice you roll against two dice and it's like a, a partial success with a complete success if you, I think, match or beat two other dice. The challenge dice. That's what I'm looking for. So there's two challenge dice. You just roll um, a dice, a die at those two. And if you match or succeed, then you are successful in some manner. So that's Starforge. I, I probably can talk more about it, but I don't know enough. And I don't want to lie to you guys and say, oh, yeah, there's also this and that. But the, again, the tables on here there are lots of tables and there are times in the day i like to try sci-fi and there's times i like to use try fantasy this would probably be the first sci-fi based rpg i want to really put my uh especially one with a lot of rules i want to try out compared to death in space which is a um, another book that's right here in my collection all right this one here is a um very popular one alternative to DD. I haven't had a chance to to really fully read it. It's a huge book. And that's DCC, then Dungeon Crawl Classics. This is the um this this book is massive. So this is super OSR feeling to it. It's a huge book. There is a huge community to this game. Um and <laughs> I'm it's overwhelming. It really is. I haven't had a chance to really fully look through this book or play it, but it has all the unique dice, the funky dice, I, I which I do have the, the I do ha own those uh, dice. But to be honest with you, it probably is not an overwhelming game. I'm just, you know, again same kind of similar approach to uh, Starforged. Uh, the design work in here is magnificent. The artwork is fantastic. The text is clean. This book is great. It does kind of actually resemble Scarlet Heroes a bit. But now that I'm looking at it, text-wise, it's black and white. The artwork is arguably better, though. It's still a great... This looks magnificent. And I think what's big in here are the spells, the, the method of magic, of how magic is handled in here. But again, I don't know enough about this game to start telling you what I love or, or hate about it. But it seems to have that OSR feel with that use of the really strange dice so i think it's a chain type of chain of dice again people who play D, D, um dcc feel free to comment point out things about why you love this game but this is what i want to try and it's a really hefty book but again it's a growing community it's a it's a huge community it appears to be the most popular probably one of the most popular alternatives of dnd at least from my point of view just seeing it from on youtube and reddit etc uh but yeah this this definitely has a very strong following that and i love to see that that this, uh, games like this get proper enjoyment on youtube or, or similar all right that's my fourth now i think that's my fourth let's see one two three yep okay just make sure i can count here's my final this is by far the most interesting version edition of Dungeons and Dragons for me. After going through all the local RPG shops that carry used editions, this one has the most appealing cover and inside page design. This is Advanced Dungeons and Dragons Player's Handbook, uh, second edition, sorry. I have both the um, Dungeon Master's uh, Guide and Player Edition, the Player Guide Handbook. So, Plus a bunch of other little accessories. Like I, I've done reviews, not reviews. I've done my explorations of the box set of Forbidden Lands, I think it's called, and then uh, Cityscape. And I have a couple. I actually found some character sheet, uh, character record sheets, which have not been filled out. The actual genuine original paper. It's magnificent. But this book design is fantastic. I'm trying to actually. To, I'm I'm actually trying to learn this book. 
learn the rules, but there's a lot to it. And I, I, I'm sure it's far more complicated than I, I feel so com It's far more complicated compared to how confident I feel about going into this. But I really want to learn uh, this game. And I love the design of this book. It has a blueprint. And there's that go. So, okay. Feel free to correct me for anybody who's listening who is familiar with that guy and playing this edition of the game. Here's how I see that guy. Again, I'm not an expert. I, this is not a tutorial. Thacko is to hit. Uh, so it's Thacko. Let's see. TH. To hit AC0. Basically, to hit an enemy's AC. Then the enemy has an AC. So if you do the attack roll, however, however it works, you have the Thacko. And I'm thinking here's how it works you have to roll. A d20, and then you add any bonuses, your strength modifier, your attack roll bonus, however it works, minus the enemy AC. And if you roll at or above, it's a hit, I think. That's how I see it. So your Thacko is based on, on your level. And it's modified based on the enemy's AC, I think, minus the enemy's AC. So, you have to roll at that value plus your bonuses. So you have your Thacko, which let's say it's 10, and the enemy AC is seven. So I'm guessing you have to roll a plus, Okay, I correct myself. I have to watch a few videos. So, your character is a Thacko. Whatever the number is, you add your uh, your attribute modifier, then your weapon bonus, if there are any, and then you add the enemy's AC. If you hit your Thacko or higher, it's a hit. The lower the AC, the harder it is to hit. So, it's descending AC. And... If the enemy has a, a negative AC, then you have to minus it after you add your bonuses. Makes it hard to hit. So that's, I believe, how it works. You roll a d20, modifiers, plus the enemy AC. If it's at your Thacko or higher, bam, hit. I love the complications of that. Even though it probably isn't complicated at all. I think before I took the break to watch a little refresher, I was thinking too much about it. The reason why I bring this up is because Scarlet Heroes has a similar method. But in Scarlet Heroes, you always have to roll a 20 or more to hit. So, the enemy AC, I think in Scarlet Heroes, is uh, descending. So if it's lower AC, it's hard to hit them. L lower armor, I think. I could be mistaken. But basically, you roll your d20. Uh, your target number is always 20. I, again, I believe. And with the mod of your strength or dexterity bonus, plus the enemy AC, you have to hit 20 or more. So essentially, I think your Thacko is always 20, in a sense, in Scarlet Heroes. But that's why I'm really intrigued to learn this edition of, of d and d and d because of Thacko. Solely because of that and, respectively, of the artwork. Again, these books I have here are a little beat up, not too bad. The pages are in great condition. None of them are falling out. And the blue font. I mean, come on. This is great. This is so old school. It's retro. It, it It's great to open and read. These pages are so... Not disorganized. They're just really stuffed together. Actually, here's a character sheet I just found. I think this is what I was actually working on. Yep, that's my handwriting. So I was actually working on the character sheet just to learn the game. And I completely forgot about it. This is, uh, yeah, I think I left it off right where I was at proficiency. So I filled out the abilities. And the attributes are right there. Some details on my character. And then I was working on proficiency. So I was trying to learn it. And I think this is, this is earlier last week. I almost forgot about that. But yeah. So... There you have it. Um, that's my list. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I'm sure you guys have your own totally different list uh, options. Feel free, please, to list below what your favorite current RPGs are, what 
what uh, ones you want to learn eventually. So, uh, yeah, that's really it. Hope you guys do well, and I'll see you next time.